Extravasation of metastasis is a critical phase in the metastatic cascade, representing the escape of cancer cells from the bloodstream into surrounding tissues. During this process, cancer cells must traverse the endothelial barrier of blood vessels, enabling their entry into secondary organs and tissue. This intricate journey involves a series of complex interactions between circulating tumor cells and the vascular endothelium, influenced by various molecular and cellular factors. The microenvironment of the target tissue also significantly influences extravasation, as the cancer cells need to adapt to the specific conditions of the new site for successful colonization. Once cancer cells successfully extravasate, they can establish secondary tumor, contributing to the spread and progression of the disease. Now, let's move to the first step in extravasation, which is rolling during cancer metastasis. It involves the interaction between circulating cancer cells and the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. This interaction is mediated by adhesion molecules and selectins. These components create a platform for initial weak interactions. The selectins on tumor cells interact with those on endothelial cells, leading to a rolling motion of tumor cells along the vessel wall. This rolling is a dynamic and reversible process. Here's a more detailed breakdown of the rolling step. Initially, circulating cancer cells experience a weak interaction with selectins on the endothelial cell surface. This interaction causes the cancer cells to slow down, a process known as tethering. Tethering allows the cancer cells to be captured by the endothelial cell. Once tethered, cancer cells undergo a rolling motion along the endothelial surface. This rolling is facilitated by the binding of selectins on the endothelial cells to specific ligands on the cancer cell surface. Importantly, these interactions are reversible, allowing cancer cells to detach and continue rolling. As tumor cells roll along the endothelium, they encounter chemokines and other signaling molecules released by the surrounding tissues or endothelial cells. These chemokines activate integrins on the surface of tumor cells. This activation increases the affinity of integrins on the cancer cell surface for adhesion molecules on the endothelial cells. This results in firm adhesion, bringing the cancer cell to a temporary halt on the endothelial surface. Rolling step is crucial because it allows cancer cells to interact with the endothelial cells in a dynamic and controlled manner. This sequential process ensures that cancer cells navigate through the vascular system efficiently while maintaining the flexibility to detach and continue circulating if the conditions are not favorable for extravasation. In the second step, adhesion entails the participation of key components, namely integrins and galactins. Integrins, functioning as cell adhesion receptors, selectively bind to specific ligands on the endothelium comprising two subunits, alpha and beta, where alpha constitutes the extracellular domain and beta forms the cytoplasmic domain. Extracellular domain of integrins engages with specific proteins in the ECM, including ligands, while the cytoplasmic domain interacts with intracellular proteins such as focal adhesion kinase, FAC, establishing a connection between the integrin and the cell's internal cytoskeleton. In their inactive state, integrins often adopt a bent or closed conformation, limiting their ligand binding capacity. The activation of of integrins involves a conformational change, enabling them to extend and selectively bind to ligands in the extracellular matrix. As tumor cells roll along the endothelium, they encounter chemokines and other signaling molecules released by the surrounding tissues or endothelial cells. These chemokines activate A4B1 integrin on the surface of tumor cells, then intracellular signaling such as FAK triggered within the tumor cells. This inside-out signaling induces conformational changes in the integrin molecules on the cell surface. These changes increase the affinity of the integrins for VCM1 ligands in the extracellular matrix. Activated integrins can now effectively bind to VCM1 ligands in the ECM. The binding of integrins to the ECM promotes stable and strong cell adhesion between tumor cells and endothelium cells. Other than A4B1 integrins, alpha L beta, two integrins, only expressed on leukocytes. Therefore, tumor cell uses utilizing leukocytes as a linker cell, possess the ability to express ICAM1 and use leukocytes as linker cells to adhere to the vascular endothelium. In this way, they adhere to the endothelium by means of an ICAM1 LFA1 interaction with the leukocyte, which for its part binds to ICAM1 on the endothelium through LFA1. Cancer cells and leukocytes both use adhesion receptors called galactins. The TF antigen serves as a ligand for galactin-3 expressed on endothelium. TF antigen is a simple disaccharide with B-galactose as a terminal sugar expressed on the surface of human carcinomas. In normal cells, the TF antigen is usually hidden or masked by other sugar molecules. However, in some cancer cells, the antigen becomes exposed on the cell surface. Example of surface molecules that express TF is MUC1 and CD44V6. After a strong adhesion, tumor cell will undergo diapodesis. This is the last and important step of extravasation in cancer cell metastasis. It is the final cascade of interactions between cancer cells and endothelium cells. This occurs when the tumor cells cross the endothelial barrier and enter the surrounding tissue by squeezing through the endothelial cells of the blood wall. Paracellular root is the movement of tumor cells between adjacent endothelial cells, making the spaces between them. Tumor cells release proteolytic enzymes that will degrade components of extracellular matrix, ECM, and junctional proteins, then will create 
create temporary openings in the endothelial cells. Tumor cells will undergo changes in their cytoskeleton, including the reorganization of actin filaments, allowing them to change their shapes and size to pass through the tight spaces between endothelial cells, then migrate between the adjacent endothelial cells created by the disrupted junction in endothelial cells to secondary tumor. For the transcellular route, it involves the direct penetration of tumor cells through individual endothelial cells. Tumor cells will induce changes in the endothelial cells that they interact with by signaling events that lead to alterations in the structure and function of the endothelial cells. Temporary openings form and act as channels that tumor cells can directly pass through. The changes on their own cytoskeleton facilitate their movement through the altered endothelial cells freely to secondary tumor. The seed and soil hypothesis explain the random distribution of metastasis in certain organ by the relationship between cancer cells, seed, and specific organ soil. Based on this concept, cancer cells tend to metastasize to specific sites in the body where the microenvironment is favorable for their growth. Thank you.